Hello and welcome to My Planet Rocks. I'm Liz Barnes and tonight chatting ahead of the release of the Disney Plus series Pistol on Tuesday, my guest is the one and only Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols. Steve Jones, welcome to Planet Rock. Hello. Let's start off with one that did get a, a lot of attention. And let's start off with Queen and keep yourself alive. Why this one? Why have you picked this one, Steve? I used to hang out in Kensington Market. And I always remember Freddie Mercury worked in there at the time. And I was always hanging around that area in Kings Road. And when I first heard that album, one of the things that stuck out to me was there was a little uh, line on the back saying, Nothing on this album was done with synthesizers. And I thought that was really interesting. You know, it was all guitars. And, uh, you know, there was different types of glam to me, more stylish dressing-wise. And then you had, like, the other the other side, which was, like, Slade and, the, and Sweet. And, you know, the clothes were a bit too Bob, you know what I mean? But then, like, Queen and all that were a lot more stylish. And I, I was drawn to that a lot more. And they're great songs and the guitar sounds. He's a great guitar player, Brian, Brian May, and um, all of them. They're, all, they're a great band, you know, whenever you saw them live. And I, I remember seeing them at, um, at the Rainbow in Finsbury Park when I was young and, and was blown away by them then. Um, Steve, you said that you've uh, been going to gigs from an early age. You were born in West London. Now, I was born in the North, and when, as a kid, I used to think, well daily i thought i wish i'd been born in london so i could see more things that were happening <laughs> and and the idea of being born in west london and being able to go to gigs at that time when so many things seemed to be happening i mean what was your sort of mu live musical awakening you know what made you first go to your first gigs um just being a, a music nut just just loved everything about it you could you could sneak in to pubs when they had bands playing. The one that sticks out to mine for me, you know, the Greyhound in Fulham, that I could sneak in there and see bands. I'd see bands like um, Finn Lizzy, Bebop Deluxe, Heavy Metal Kids, and it, it, it was it was brilliant. You're like so close to them, and it was just raw and just exciting. It was great. Um, Steve, you've mentioned a couple of times, I mean, anyone who's into music, you know, as a young teenager, you either get that fire lit underneath you or you don't, and you obviously did. How quickly did you manage to turn that excitement of watching other people into, actually, I'm going to do this? Well, there were some kids from school that we attempted to put a band together, and we eventually did a show and it was a nightmare. I hated singing. And then Malcolm, he came into the picture and he said, you need to stop singing and you need to audition a singer and you play guitar. That's basically how, how the little, how it all transitioned into what led to be the, the Sex Pistols. You were talking a little bit earlier, Steve, about um, when you were younger, getting to go see gigs. Um, I'm presuming that you saw David Bowie, but I could be wrong. I did see David Bowie, yes, at Hammersmith Odeon. Massive fan of The Spiders from Mars, them two albums, you know, Aladdin Sane and The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust. Massive. Well, unfortunately, after the first night, they left all the gear set up and everyone had left. I'm in there hiding. And um, I went and got a minivan, came back and decided to uh, help myself to what was on stage. What went missing was uh, uh, Trevor Boulder's Sun amp, Woody Woodman's cymbals, and um, a bunch of microphones. Uh, Bowie's microphone, little Electra voice that had lipstick on it. I've actually made amends to uh, Woody Woodman's. He, he came on my show, and I told him live that I nicked his cymbals, and what can I do to make it right? And, he, and <laughs> I gave him like 300 quid, I think, for dollars, and he was happy with that. Did you ever did you ever get to tell Bowie? I did tell Bowie and he didn't seem too phased by it. I think he laughed about it, if I remember. It was on a phone. Yeah, there's a phone call somewhere. 
I mean, obviously, it, some of it did come in handy later, like Paul's drum kit and Wally's guitar and uh, some PA stuff when we did early shows. That was all pilfered. Well, it, I guess it kind of literally brings you closer to the music, doesn't it? If you kind of got some of the stuff. Yeah, um, you can look at it that way, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we need to play your choice of Bowie at this point. Um, I love the fact that you've chosen Star from the rise and fall of, of, of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars rather than any of the others, because no one ever plays this. It's a great track. It's a brilliant track. And, that, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to play it, because no one plays that they always play the obvious ones but it, it's, a, it's a brilliant song and it, it's a flawless album you know he's got he got mick ronson on board and woody and trevor and, they, and it all worked and they, it was one of their moments where it all just like fell into place and it was perfect and exciting and they was excited to be doing it you can tell by the sound of it you know um we can't really be having this conversation without talking about two sort of fairly big sex pistols related things that are that are happening at the moment um the first one that i'm going to talk about is the the forthcoming six episode tv series called pistol which um you've worked with danny boyle on but it's based on your memoirs isn't it it's based on lonely lonely boy yeah lonely boy tales of a sex pistol did you take much persuading to actually take that step and put it on screen no, are you kidding me? <laughs> Danny Boyle, who want the director, who's going to turn that down? You'd have to be a mug to say, no, I think I'll pass. As far as I know ab about Danny Boyle, he must have been absolutely dying to make this. Um, and the two of you working together, what was he like to work with? He's great. You know, he's, he's great with artists, you know. You know, um, you know, he's from that era. He was, I think he's 65, I think he's a year younger than me obviously punk was a big deal to him back in the day and you know i just completely trusted his pedigree what he was going to do i just let him get on with it there was a few things i wanted to change that i wasn't adamant about but the bulk of it i just let him get on with it and he i think he did a brilliant job of casting the script with craig pierce i think it was brilliant how did you feel about watching someone be you uh, I mean, it's it's a little odd, but exciting as well. You know, I'm like, I can't believe that someone's actually, there's a TV show and there's a guy playing me and I'm, I'm the core of it throughout the whole series. Um, I think the cast, it, it was casted brilliantly. Anson Boone, the guy who plays John, did a great job. You know, and Danny has relived that, you know, got the whole mid 70s vibe perfect and i'm just uh i'm blown away that it actually came to life and it's actually happening it's going to be released you know soon it's sort of coming up to that time when god save the queen was kept off the top spot by rod stewart or well it was number one in the enemy chart wasn't it but it was kept off well, the official chart by rod it was stewart number one but uh, it, it, bbc just couldn't swallow it that, <laughs> you know, with, with, with what was going on with the queen's jubilee and all that but at the time i think it maybe made it even more exciting the fact that you know there was a bit of a controversy about whether you should be number one or not yeah and, and, and sometimes you'd see number one and it was just a blank spot i think that's perfect it is perfect and it was when when does that ever happen you know that this band could cause that to happen. That, that is way better than actually being acknowledged as number one, I think. Steve, it's been brilliant to talk to you, and I'm glad that you're still talking about the Sex Pistols, but I'm really glad you're still talking about everything else as well. And um, I don't know if we will talk the next time there's a, a Royal Jubilee, but, um, but if we did get a chance to, I would love it. Thank you very much indeed for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and please hit that like button, it's appreciated. Make sure that you subscribe for more rock-related content.